Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock from Operation Right Home here with a video tutorial for you on coloring Soldier Ian from the Greeting Farm. And at the very end, you'll see a card that I made using that image using Authentique's Glory line, which is a fantastic patriotic line of papers. So let's get started. I started by pulling up an image of someone wearing a uniform so I could follow the camouflage pattern. There are several different types of camouflage, so you can choose whichever you wish. This one I started using the W2 as a base coat underneath all of the parts that are going to have the camouflage. Not really worrying about giving it a um, depth or dimension as of yet, that'll be added later, but I just want to get the base color in there and pattern on all the areas that are fabric. I'm not being super, super tidy. You can see I'm just kind of scribbling color in there. This is sped up, don't worry that your coloring is not this fast, it's about 200%. And I'm just filling in those areas in random shapes. You can see on the fabric itself that some areas are more full of green than others. And this BG93 works pretty well, giving you an overall sense of that green. Now I'm filling in some areas that I want to be solid. I'm not even going to worry about putting shading in them because I want those to be restful places. The entire image is going to be so very, very busy that having some places where the eye can rest is going to be an important thing. I'm adding my very darkest shadows with W7, warm gray 7, and that's just in the areas right underneath of where shadows fall underneath an object. W5 is the second gray that I'm putting in. I'm adding more depth to it on both sides of objects that are dimensional, that pop off of the rest of the image, and adding a little bit to those places where I put the W7 already. And I'm going to go in with a little bit of W3, and I'm not being too fussy with it, but I'm just softening some of those areas where the W5 ends at so that it's a little smoother going into the rest of the image. Now I'm going to go color the flesh tones. I'm putting in my E53 first. That's the color I use for shading on Caucasian skin. And I'm filling that in with E51. And right where they meet, I'm putting extra liquid ink because that's what makes the colors blend. And since it is so wet already, I'm able to just go in with a touch more of the E53 to add a little bit more depth to it. The hair now, I want to be really strong colored, really, really dark. So I'm going with an E49 for the darkest color and adding in just some shading on each of those pieces of drawn hair. And I'm also going to do the tip of his boots. And the second color I'm going with is an E37. It's a little bit lighter, but I'm adding it a little bit extra right beside where all of those darker places are. That'll just add another layer of blending and as, if I keep it wet and I work pretty quickly, they blend pretty naturally. The third color I'm going to go in with is E33 and I'm just coloring over top of both of the areas that I already colored with those other two browns and just filling them in letting the color start to smoosh together, which on hair and boots is perfectly appropriate. Smooshing is okay. Now I'm going back in with that medium tone, that E37, and I'm adding just a little bit more depth. And I'm just using a quick C7, C5, and C3 combo for the rest of these pieces. Thanks so much for taking a moment to watch this video. Punch is showing you exactly where that like button is, so you can click that if you enjoyed it. Click the subscribe button up above so you can get more videos like this from me. And have a happy 4th of July.